So the idea is that we want to mix as well as aerate the cocktail. Aloha folks, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. We are all alone tonight. Just you and me, just like old times. We're gonna do a cocktail from the Mai Kai. I particularly love the cocktails of the Mai Kai. Usually they were derivative of Don the Beachcomber cocktails because Mariana Liquidini brought the cocktails from Don the Beachcomber to Fort Lauderdale. If you don't know about the Mai Kai, the Mai Kai is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It was built in 1956. See, you don't have to put it up there this time. It is the perfect tiki time capsule, time travel, everything is perfect in it. Music, cocktails, the waitresses, decor, everything. It is a dream for people who love traditional tiki. A dream. Before we go on, I'd like to thank Jason T. Smith, the incredible vintage hunter guy. <laughs> he gave me this, uh, this vintage Hawaiian shirt. I'm very thankful for it. It's by no doubt the biggest collar I've ever owned. Check this out. The biggest collar I've ever owned. And uh, judging by this collar, I'm gonna date it probably late 60s. So if you didn't see that episode yet, go back and watch it, it was great. We did a vintage Mai Tai that was developed by Trader Vic Bergeron for the surf room of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Waikiki. An incredible cocktail. And you know my feelings about Mai Tais. The 1944 one is the one. But as long as you call the other versions by the other versions names, no problem here. But tonight we're gonna make a cocktail from the Mai Kai. I found this on our friend Hurricane Hayward's Atomic Grog blog. This is his interpretation of the Mai Kai swizzle. And so for this cocktail, we'll be using lemons, oranges, mango nectar, orgeat from the Liquid Alchemist, falernum, rich sugar syrup, this is two to one sugar to water, and the recipe calls for Appleton Special Gold Jamaican Rum. The Appleton Special Gold is a blend of pot still and column still rums. We're gonna be using a pure pot still gold. I've already smelled this. I think it's gonna work incredibly for this cocktail. But if you wanna be super traditional to the recipe, Appleton Special Gold Jamaican Rum. All right. Let's jump into this. And do I have a special guest for y'all? I know I said that it was just you and me. I've had so many requests to bring back my little white knife. If you're old school, if you've gone through all the episodes, you know the story of this incredible little ceramic white knife. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, there's a reason. Oh, there's a reason why we swapped this one. I hate to let down all the fans of the white knife, but man. I used to think this was so sharp, and then I got the shoon from our buddy at Ballistic Barbecue, and man, is that a superior knife. I thought it'd be nice to bring him back just for one last tour of duty. Stupid. Okay, well, we need half an ounce of lemon juice. Oh, man. Not a ton of juice in this lemon. Whew, smells lemony, though. Okay. There's half an ounce right there. We will be pouring everything into a tin, like so. All right, it's maybe the last piece of fruit you ever cut on the show, white knife. Oh yeah, you gotta saw it. Okay, it'll be one and a half ounces of orange juice. And as I've said before on the show, I kind of roll the fruit. You can see my fingers pressing from the top down to the bottom. It seems to direct the juice down. I don't know if that's a technique or if maybe like right here we can call it the breezeway technique. Yeah, I'm a real big fan of the breezeway technique when it comes to squeezing oranges. See, that's an example of how you can use it at your bar job if you're a real bartender. I use the breezeway technique. It works super well. One and a half ounces of orange juice. Okay, one half ounce of mango nectar. Perfect. One half ounce of rich sugar syrup. There we are. I'm starting to notice all these airplanes while I'm filming, and I think the reason is because we weren't seeing all the airplanes like a year ago. There's way less travel. Weird. Okay, half an ounce of rich simple syrup. Quarter ounce of orgeat. And of course, orgeat is an almond syrup. And then an eighth of an ounce of falernum. Like, just a hint. Isn't that bizarre? That's so little. Oh man, I hate that. 
I love this flavor so much that it's a bummer that there's only an eighth. Yeah, it's an eighth. Woo. And now for the rum. Oh, ho, ho. what do you think about, oh, what do you think about corks? You like corks? Hit the like button right now if you like corks. Do it for the cork. Oh, that smells so good. And two ounces of the gold Jamaican rum. There it is. Ooh. Got a little on the side. Okay. Now this is interesting because Hurricane Hayward on his blog goes, we know that the Maikai uses top-down spindle blenders, but this is a swizzle. So, Ed Hamilton gave me a real live swizzle stick. Well, not live, dead. This piece of wood grows naturally like this. It grows as a swizzle stick, a tree in Australia. Weird. But there's a technique with this thing. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna put some sonic ice. And of course, before top-down spindle mixers, they did this stuff by hand. And I've been paying attention to the technique. It's literally like this. Can you see that? Okay, so the idea is that we wanna mix as well as aerate the cocktail, introduce some air and create some bubbles. One of the things that I love about the Mai Kai is they have specific glassware for almost every cocktail. Of course, there's a lot of repeats and stuff, but I searched high and low to find a glass that replicated the one that they use. And the one that I found must be from the 50s because it is a flat bottom stemmed cocktail glass with atomic starbursts on it. Yeah, super rad. And I think when this episode is done, I'm gonna put them in our store. So if you like these things, you will literally have moments to buy them. Years later, or if you're still watching this episode, uh, all I can say is check eBay. I don't know. But it, what a beautiful cocktail glass. The top has like a little piece of gold around the top. Oh man. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour the cocktail into this beautiful glass. Ho ho ho. We will top off with ice. And then another thing that I went out of my way for, I had to get the garnish as depicted on the menu. And so for the garnish, they use a... Mm. And then for the garnish, they use a pineapple chunk with a little sword, a red maraschino cherry, and the wildly elusive green maraschino cherry. Dude, I couldn't find these anywhere. I had to go to uh, Amazon for them. So we'll garnish like that. Probably only use that one cherry out of there for however much that costs. And we'll put a straw on the back. And so, from the very first menu at the Mai Kai in 1956, this is the Mai Kai Swizzle. I'm super excited to give this one a try. Oh, wow, whoa. That is such an unexpected taste. Oh man, I, first taste, that might be one of my favorite cocktails. Whew, that's, okay. Okay, let's, let's, let's figure this one out here. It feels like all fruit juice up front. And then after you kind of swallow, then you get that slight burn from the rum, but not like an uncomfortable burn, just like delicious. Oh man. I think it's the mango also that's really smoothing it all out. I remember we had the mango in the Hula Billy Honey, and then up till this point, we had never used mango in the other 67 cocktails. But mango's popped up twice now. And I gotta say, that is delicious. Wowza. The lemon juice, I don't know if I'm tasting lemon juice. I think the lemon juice helps to serve the whole kind of the whole cocktail. It's got a little bit of that lemony kind of bitterness. The mango is such a smooth and I want to say warm, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, we'll say warm, like enveloping kind of flavor that it's, um, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. And of course the sugar syrup too will help like bring down the aggressiveness of, of the, uh, the sharp flavors. I wish I could tell you exactly what this tastes like, because it's 
it's just so good. And I'd have to imagine that the Hamilton pot still gold is probably helping to serve this thing really well as well. Really well as well. Really well as well. I get almost no falernum in this. Uh, or Jade, I could see help smooth this thing out too. It's such an intricate cocktail. I would make this over and over again. I would make this for guests. I would make this for people who are very experienced cocksmiths. Uh, this is incredible. I think that next time I'd, I'd like to use my Hamilton Beach top-down spindle uh, mixer. It's fun to use the swizzle stick, but I think that I would love to have this like a little more frothed up, like a little more mm, alive, I guess. I can't tell you the mission that I went on to find this green maraschino cherry. I went to like three stores, nobody had them. If you have any idea what the purpose of a green maraschino cherry is, I am perplexed. Leave a message in the comments below because uh, I have no idea why you would want a green maraschino cherry. I really can't wait till I get the opportunity to go back to the Maikai. I'd love to be able to talk to them beforehand too and um, see if we can set up something during their close time because in the past I've been able to do photo shoots there. And of course the Hula Girls have performed at the Mai Kai I think three times now, something like that. Being a, a band from California, that's a pretty rad feat, I, th I think. But there's nothing like the Mai Kai. Jason T. Smith and I were both just talking about like, if I'm gonna ask somebody what their favorite tiki bar is, you just, you go, uh, excluding the Mai Kai, what's your favorite tiki bar? Because anybody that's been to the Mai Kai just goes, dude, there's no contest. And there's incredible tiki bars all over the country now, all over the world now. Ain't nothing gonna beat the Mai Kai. It can't, just out of size, scope, history, legacy, uh, amount of art. And with that, folks, thank you so much for joining us. Once again on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Dude, like 67 episodes, can you believe that? I hope you guys have been enjoying it. I certainly have been enjoying it. It's been a, it's been a super fun project. Don't forget to join the Patreon if you aren't already. $10 tier gets you a, a rad little Breezeway Cocktail Hour enamel pin. It also gets you first in line for when our Breezeway Cocktail Hour Tiki Mug is finally released. So, exciting times ahead. Tune in next week. Aloha. And I always love the the mic. I always love the cocktails. Of, I always love the cocktails of the Mai Tai. Oh my God. Of course, if you don't, of course. And it is the most beautiful, expansive tiki. It's like the perfect. What was that, dude? I, dude, I have been doing a ton of work on the Breezeway Lagoon. Did you know I have a lagoon? Yeah. Totally have a lagoon. I dug it with my own hands and a pickaxe. Seriously, it was like 1942 out there from the, on the chain gang. I always remember my dad saying how he wished he had like a water feature in the back of our house, you know, that he could look down on and, and then just decided not to do it because, you know, it seemed like a lot of work or whatever. And ever since he said that, I was like, uh, I want that and I'm gonna do it. And it was a ton of work ton of work and I'm still working on it. It's like six years later now and I finally have the money to be able to do some certain things right, like get better pumps and better filters and I think I'm gonna build, I think I'm gonna build a waterfall too. Oh, but it, it does have a volcano in it. But yeah, I'm all excited about the pond again. And when I first got the pond too, Astro was like watching the fish. I put fish in there and Astro was like watching the fish going, can I get, can I get those things? Like if I jump in this, am I gonna be okay? So he was watching the fish and then eventually he just got used to the fish. And, no big deal, but yeah, I'm all reinvigorated about the Breezeway Lagoon. So you'll see more of that coming up. Oof, that's so good. It's so good because it's not super fruity. It's not super rummy. It's just really one of those cocktails that you go, oh yeah, that's blended really, really well. It's like a real delicate cocktail. I can see how too much of any little thing could throw this thing way off, but that's a good one. If you have the ingredients at home, you should make it. And if you have the Appleton Special Gold Jamaican Rum, try it with that. Let me know what you think. <laughs> we did a Mai Tai from the Royal Hunt. <laughs> Hippelman's Double Spiced Falernum Syrup. Me. I'm drinking a beer. What the I'm drinking it out of a 10 pin. Why is this guy talking to me? <laughs> and now for the booze. <laughs> Weird green cherry. Get off me. 
Another airplane. I was off, bug. There's a bug by the lens. Mmm. Pineapple's so good. So you might have noticed that I've changed locations and you're probably going, dude, what's this bar? And why are you in this part of the breezeway? This isn't like the thing. Yeah, I know. Since recording the original episode, the Hula Girls have performed a one night, two seating show, totally sold out. And I just wanted to kind of talk about that, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's what I wanted to talk about. It was a really special night because my band, the Hula Girls, haven't performed together in almost two years. The last show that we performed at was at the Los Angeles Adventurers Club. And that was in January of the end of the world, if you know what I mean. But at this particular show that we're talking about, we had three of our earliest and longest running go-go dancers performing together. Miss Audrey Lorraine, Miss Neva Moore, and we haven't had Judy Luck perform with us since 2016. So it was a really special night. And it was so great to meet so many fans of the Breezeway Cocktail Hour too. Like, totally unexpected. I just kept thinking like, oh yeah, everybody's here to see the band, but also uh, it was nice to have so many friends come up and go, yeah, dude, we watch the show every week and thank you so much for doing it. And and I was like, wow, thank you for, wa <laughs> thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Not every song was perfect, and um, but I think that's part of a live performance, especially a live performance from a band that hasn't performed in like two years. But we had a great time. And we want to thank Secret Island in Long Beach for hosting us. And Chris Burkhart from uh, Stellar Shows Presents. Yeah, it was a great night. And there's no way I could put this episode out with at least talking about that whole night. And so many friends and fans of the Hula Girls from the early days of Don the Beachcomber and Sunset Beach. It like really felt like we were bringing that whole thing back. So thank you to all of you who showed up at that show. Yeah, it felt good to be in a tiki bar together again. Not just this one, by myself or with one friend at a time. So, thank you so much. And uh, I guess that's all. All right, aloha. Oh, by the way, this bar, stay tuned. <laughs>